What's up, mana kids? I'm Hunter. And I'm Savannah. And Hunter, I actually have a gift for you. What? For me? Is it the new PlayStation? I can't tell you, but open it. Woo! What if it's that super awesome model car I've been wanting forever? It's a... Uh... It's an angel? Savannah, why did you buy me an angel ornament? Well, Hunter, <laughs> why don't I tell you all about it right after Ollie? Keep watching and learning.
It's your friend Zoe. And I'm so happy to see you today. Doesn't the clubhouse look beautiful? I just love Christmas. It's my very favorite time of the year. My friends and I have been reading the Christmas story and I've learned all about Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. I just love hearing all about the Christmas story. So earlier today when my cousin Sasha and I were making Christmas gingerbread cookies, I thought to myself, I want to decorate my cookie to look extra special. So I'm gonna decorate my cookie like baby Jesus. Do you want to help me decorate this cookie? It's my favorite. Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hello, Zoe. Who? Who? Decorating Christmas cookies, are you? Hi, Ollie. I sure am. I've been learning all about the Christmas story, so I wanted to decorate my gingerbread cookies like Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. I'm so excited. I can't wait to show my cousin. The Christmas story is the best story ever told. It's true. And I'd like to share it with you. Just listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? Oz got a Bible story for me and you. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh! Hi, friends. I'm Justin the Mailman. It's almost Christmas. Are you getting excited? Me too. And so are these people. So many Christmas cards to deliver today. But none more important than this one. It's our story mail. Are you ready for the next part of the true story of Christmas? Great. Here we go. Okay, so the true story of Christmas began when an angel told a girl named Mary she was going to have a baby. And the baby was going to be super special because, drum roll please, he was God's son. That's right, God loves us so much that he gave us his son Jesus. Today's story is about when Jesus is born. Oh, I'm so excited. Look, it's Mary and Joseph. What's Mary riding on? Can you guess what animal that is? A donkey. You're right. What does a donkey say? Can you do it? Are you ready? Hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw. Great job. Mary and Joseph needed an animal, like a donkey, to get to the town of Bethlehem. When they got to Bethlehem, they needed to find a place to stay. Joseph knocked on the door of an inn. Everybody knock with me. Ready? Knock, knock, knock. The innkeeper said there was no room for them inside, but they could stay in the stable out back. So Mary and Joseph had to sleep in a stable where all the animals stayed. Listen, what animals do you hear? It's a cow. That's right. Hmm. What's this one? A chicken, that's right. How about this one? A sheep, that's right. What about this one? That's not an animal. What is that? It's a baby. Jesus, God's son, was born. Everyone do a whisper, yay. Ready? Yay. Mary wrapped the baby all up and put him in the manger. Wow, the most special baby in all the world had been born. This is why we celebrate Christmas. Jesus, God's son, was born. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, why is Jesus special? Jesus is God's son. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, why is Jesus special? Jesus is God's son. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Happy birthday, Jesus. See you next time. So there's your story. It's all true. Baby Jesus was born as a gift to me and you. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. 
Wow, that really is the best story ever told. And the best part is, it's all true. I'm so happy Jesus is born, aren't you? I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I'm gonna wrap up my baby Jesus cookie, just like Mary did, baby Jesus. Aw, so sweet. Happy birthday, Jesus! I better start decorating my cookie. I'll see you all next time. Merry Christmas! God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, John 3.16. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, John 3.16. It's still so crazy to me that God sent an angel to Mary to tell her that she was gonna have God's baby. I mean, I wonder how scared she was. Wait, is that why you gave me an angel? It is. I wanted to remind you that God sent an angel to deliver God's promise to the world, to remind you that the true meaning of Christmas is Jesus. Wow, you know, that actually reminds me of our life app. And what's a life app? That's right, it's something God does within us to change the world around us. And all this month, we're talking about Christmas. Celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Now, I hear this next video has some more information on how Mary reacted to finding out she was pregnant. Let's keep watching and learning.
everybody, it's me, Jacob. Sorry if it seems like I'm in a rush. Gotta make this quick, cause it's the holidays. So you know what that means? Lots of plans on the old calendar. I got something happening every single day leading up to the big day. Christmas! Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. So let me see if there's anything new in this big wrapped box. And then I can get busy celebrating. Here we go. No way. This is what Christmas is all about right here. Ginger spiced pecan with a hint of nutmeg, some oregano mixed in just for a little flavor and sprinkled on top with chocolate sprinkles. And then we mix in some of Aunt Dory's famous protein powder just to build the muscle non-dairy, gluten-free, if you can believe it, Dory can make it. And I'm, 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 I'm sensing a hint of chocolate now? She's, she's mixing up, she's gone off the grid, she's mixing up the recipe. It smells so good, but the taste, the taste, oh! I don't have the words to describe the taste of Aunt Dory's famous pie. I'm gonna need to set this down for a second. My family's been going to Aunt Dory's at Christmas time ever since I was a little kid. That's always been the plan. I get to hang out with my cousins and catch up on old times. We always eat the biggest meal. You never saw so many casseroles. But if your belly's smart, it always saves room for the pie. Mmm. Sorry, sorry. Come on, Jacob, get it together. I'm getting distracted by pie. Sorry. This year, we had to change the plan a little bit. Aunt Dory hasn't been feeling too well, and the family thought it'd be best if we wait until she's feeling better before we get together. It's kind of a bummer when plans don't go the way you'd expect, but we're trying to make the best of things. Find things to be joyful about, you know? Hey, the story today is about changing plans. This girl, Mary, she had to change her plans, not just for the holidays, but for her whole life. And do you think she was able to be joyful? We'll find out in just a minute. I think I'll stick around for the, uh, uh, for the story. Hmm. And the pie. Maybe just some pie, just a little bit of pie. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter one, verses 26 through 56. Mary lived in the tiny town of Nazareth, an ordinary village at the edge of Jewish lands. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Mary herself was an ordinary girl. Oh, hello. She grew up learning the Jewish scriptures. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, he will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. When will this happen? Only God knows. It's been hundreds of years. Mary went to fetch water from the well and baked loaves of bread and swept out the hard-packed earth floor. It's important to clean the dirt off the dirt. <laughs> she was also engaged to be married to a carpenter named Joseph. Mary must have expected that her life would follow a very ordinary path until one day when everything changed. Greetings, Mary. Suddenly, right there in the dim room, a brilliant being appeared. Mary probably dropped whatever she was holding, a broom, a batch of bread dough, a needle and thread. Who, me? The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Mary blinked, trying to take it all in. The whole room glowed with light. I, I don't understand. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. Mary couldn't find any words. In one heartbeat, her very ordinary day had flipped upside down. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will rule forever over his people. That kingdom will never end. The words of Isaiah may have echoed in Mary's head. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. 
He will rule over us. She finally found her voice. How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. The light flared even brighter. The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child even though she is old. People thought she could not have children, but she has been pregnant for six months now. That's because what God says will always come true. Mary's heart pounded. Her cousin Elizabeth was old enough to be a grandmother, and if she was having a baby, pfft, anything could happen. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. The light faded. The towering angel disappeared. Mary leaned against the wall to collect her thoughts. Elizabeth, I have to go see her. The journey to Elizabeth and Zechariah's home in the hill country of Judah would have taken many days of travel along dusty roads. Finally, Mary arrived. Why, it's Mary. Elizabeth, I have so much to tell you. As Mary spoke, Elizabeth could feel the child inside of her leap and kick for joy. God's Holy Spirit spoke to Elizabeth. God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside of me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You have believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. Mary laughed and cried at the same time as she hugged her older cousin. God confirmed once again that Mary could find joy in the extraordinary plan God had for her. Now tell me your story. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for several weeks. She was so filled with joy, she poured out her heart in a song to God. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He has taken note of me, even though I'm not considered important. He shows his mercy to those who have respect for him. He has filled with good things those who are hungry. He has helped the people of Israel who serve him. He has done it just as he had promised to our people of long ago. At the end of three months, Mary returned home to Nazareth, ready to see how God's plan was about to unfold. Uh, uh, I can't believe I just ate that whole pie. Almost the whole pie. That was not part of the plan. But hey, I definitely felt the joy. Maybe you're like me, and your plans had to change for some reason this season. Reason season. I rhymed that on purpose. Nah, I'm just teasing. It is totally okay to feel sad when plans don't go the way you expect. I'm sad I don't get to go to Aunt Dory's. But, like Aunt Dory says, you don't have to dwell on the sadness. You don't have to stay sad forever. There could be a bigger reason why plans change. Think about it. Before God revealed his plan, Mary was just like any one of us. She had her own hopes and dreams for the future, just like we do. But her plans changed because God had a bigger plan for her. It's the same with us. My plans, God's plans. God knows everything that's ever happened, and he knows everything that's going to happen. So, he has a plan for you. It may be different than your plan, but trust me, it's a bigger and better plan. So, if you're sad when plans change, that's okay. Just don't dwell there. You can have joy knowing that your plans are in bigger hands. Plans hands, that sort of rhymes. Here's the one thing to remember today. You can have joy because God has a plan for you. It's cool to think that the creator of the universe has a plan just for me. I don't know about you, but that makes me kind of, uh, <laughs> Also kind of excited, huh, and kind of hungry. One more slice of pie won't hurt. Oh, looks like the plans are changing again. Oh boy, the plans are changing fast. I'll catch you next time.
Almost there. Here we go, here we go, uh-huh, uh-huh. What is this again, John? Well, you know how I like to ice sculpt? No, I did not know that. I talk about it all the time. No. Okay, well, anyway, I made an eight-foot tall Christmas tree, which is an exact replica of the 77-foot tall Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center in New York City. Wouldn't that just be like a regular Christmas tree? No, you're missing the point. I, I carved the tree out of an ice block with a chainsaw. Oh. Yeah. Oh, now that does sound amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah can, can you take the blindfold off now? All right, take a deep breath. Okay. <gasps> mm-hmm. And prepare to be amazed. Where is it? It was right here. It was. I spent many hours on that. It was perfect. It had like individual branches, individual lights on it. It even had a star on top. <laughs> Somebody stole my ice sculpture. Oh. I found it. Spice. It's pumpkin cream. Go. What? Go, go, oh, go, go. Oh. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the So and So Show. We are your hosts, Brandon. And John, and a very merry almost Christmas to you all. Yes, indeed. We are so excited that it's December again, and we get to revisit some of our favorite Bible stories, eat lots of fruitcake, and sing carols off pitch for our neighbors. <laughs> Deck the halls with boughs of holly. La 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 la. Merry, merry uh, Christmas. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was so much fun last year. Hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pencil that in for, say, next Thursday at 2.27 p.m. Oh, that's specific. Yeah, well, there's lots of holiday plans, my friend. <laughs> you got to squeeze them all in there. <laughs> okay, well, I guess it's a plan. Uh, you guess. Yeah, sure. You better be sure. My time here is precious, buddy. This is Christmas. This calendar fills up fast and full. Oh. Look, see? Yeah. Look no, at I that. See. Yeah, ooh, I see that. <laughs> Good, because tomorrow... Look at this, look at this. Tomorrow, I'm making gingerbread houses with my nieces, then off to the homeless shelter to hand out Christmas scarves, then I'm helping my mom decorate her Christmas tree before I go grocery shopping for the annual family Christmas bake-off, which is the next day. And the bake-off is always a 24-hour event, so there will be no sleeping that night, and then I have only 45 minutes the day after that for a little nap before the Christmas train leaves the station again. You going on a train? It's a metaphorical train, Brandon, and it doesn't stop till New Year's Eve! <gasps> I love Christmas. If I may speak freely. Sure, you have 23 seconds. Okay, uh, it seems like your calendar is a little overstuffed. Yeah, what do you mean? Like, how are you going to enjoy all of the things this month if every minute is filled with some type of plan? Christmas plan, that's what Christmas is all about. It's about having Christmas all month long. Okay, but still, I don't think it's what Christmas is all about. There's other- Time's up! Please welcome someone who knows stuff. What? You aren't expecting a guest today. I know, I didn't have time to schedule a visit with my aunt and my uncle, so just make the best of it, okay? Hey, Aunt Irene and Uncle Jim, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. Your studio is lovely. Uh, uh, this is Brandon, my co-host. Oh. oh, hi, Brandon. Oh, it sure is good finally meeting you, Brandon. <laughs> we love watching the show. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, Merry Christmas to you both. Hey, Merry Christmas to you all. Hey, have a seat. Okay, oh, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's great. Oh. Yeah, right there, right there. Right there. No, yeah, no, 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 right here. I, uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, you're right here, right here. And Uncle Jim. Okay, that's oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> All right. <laughs> okay, uh, tell us who you are and what you know. Well, um, hmm. We are your Aunt Irene. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, and I'm Uncle Jim. Yeah, we, we covered that. We covered that. And I don't know what we know. Um, well, I know we love you, John. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. yeah. <laughs> oh, and I know all about raised bed herb gardening. Yeah. And that is all the time we have for today. Hey, thanks for coming on the show, you guys. It was oh, great seeing you. Oh, but we, we just got here. Yeah, yeah, come on, John. Don't be rude. I'm not being rude. I'm just trying not to cut into Kellen's time. Oh, that's it. What? It's Bible story time with Kellen! Hey, Kellen. I hope you need help telling the Bible story today, Kellen. 
Uh, I think the so-and-so show players have it covered this week. Not anymore. It's time for the dynamic stylings of my Uncle Jim and Aunt Irene. Hi, Kellen. I'm an angel. Okay. This should be fun. Here we go. Aunt Irene and Uncle Jim in the story of Mary and the angel. And you can find this story in the Gospel of Luke. <clears throat> Around 2,000 years ago, God sent an angel named Gabriel to the town of Nazareth. Hello. I've got a message from God for a girl named Mary. Mary was engaged to Joseph, and Joseph came from the family line of King David. Mary. Oh, hello. Who are you? The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. How exciting. Mary was actually very frightened when Gabriel appeared to her. Oh, okay. Ah, how terrifying. Oh, see, that was really good. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I do. I really felt your fear. Oh, thank you. But do not be afraid, Mary, for God is very pleased with you. And you will get pregnant and have a son, and you must call him Jesus, and he will be called the Son of the Most High God, and his kingdom will never end. How can this happen? I am not married. The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High God will cover you. Oh, wow. That's really something, ain't it? I guess God can do anything, right, Kellen? Yeah. In fact, one of Mary's own relatives, Elizabeth, was also going to have a baby, even though everyone thought she was too old. Oh, that's amazing. What God says will always come true. So, what do you think, Mary? I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. After that, the angel left her. Oh, okay then. See ya. Now, Mary really wanted to share her news with someone, so she went to see Elizabeth. The baby in Elizabeth's belly jumped for joy when Mary arrived. And Elizabeth told Mary, God has blessed you and the child you will have. You believe the Lord's promises. And then Mary said, My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. Want me to keep going? Thanks, Aunt Irene, but that'll do. Mary may have been afraid of what was going to happen. She may have been overwhelmed with all the planning she had to do to prepare for a new baby in her life. But she was able to find joy in it. And she took the time to praise God for being faithful to her and her people and for always keeping his promises. The end. It was incredible. Yeah, great job, Aunt Irene and Uncle Jim. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey. Yeah. Oh, and thanks to you too, Kellen. Nah, don't even mention it. What do you guys think of the story? I loved it. An angel appearing to someone, that's always epic. I liked how Mary was willing to trust God even when things seemed impossible. Oh, and I like the song. <laughs> oh, stop it. Oh. It was great meeting you both, and thank you so much for your help with the Bible story. You bet. Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye Kevin. Kevin. Oh, we better get going, too. Yeah. Lots of plans for the holidays, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. Can you guys stay a little longer? I've really enjoyed having you here. Oh. Well, well. Uh, are you sure, John? I mean, you seem awfully busy. I am. I mean, <laughs> I was. Oh. Hey, looks like my schedule opened up. Well, Hello. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, twist my arm. All right, come on over. Come on in. It's Christmas. I don't want to get so busy with all my plans that I forget to enjoy any of them. Oh, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, you know what my plan is right now? Let's sing Christmas carols out of tune. All okay. right, okay. <gasps> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Question. What are your plans for Christmas? Yeah, what have you got on your calendar this year? Decorating a tree, maybe? Or baking cookies? Or visiting family. Yeah. Talk about it with each other. 
What are your plans for Christmas? And we'll see you next time on The, the So and So Show! <laughs> All right, jingle bells again, ready? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, how fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. It's hard to sing the harmony when you're when you're all on. Harmony, I was singing the harmony. You start. You're singing the harmony. I was singing the harmony. Oh, you sing it then. Oh, I was just. I thought I was. Oh, oh, you were? No, maybe. Oh, maybe that's. Go ahead. You know what, Savannah? This ornament may not have been what I was expecting but I think it's the best gift ever. You really went out of your way to remind me of God's promise, Jesus. That means a lot, Hunter. I mean, Jesus was born to fulfill the promise God gave all of us so that we could be forgiven of all of our sins. Yeah. And what sin? It's anything we think, say, or do that makes God sad and separates us from Him. Because God loves us so much, we celebrate Christmas to honor and celebrate Jesus and his sacrifice. If you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, we're going to give you that opportunity right now. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I want you to come into my life. I want you to come into my life. And forgive me of my sins. And forgive me of my sins. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much, Jesus. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations! If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, God is extremely happy, and so are we! And now, families, it's time for... Small Groups. In the link below, we have some amazing resources for you to learn more about God together. And we'll... See, see you, you next week! week.